What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be walking through Seattle, the largest city in the Pacific Northwest. Today's date is Wednesday, April 26, 2023. It's about 1.15 p.m. and it's 59 Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius. This city is known for notable attractions such as the Space Needle in front of me, which was built for the 1962 World's Fair and is currently an observation tower. It used to be the tallest structure west of the Mississippi River and it's located in the Seattle Center which is a community events me uh, venue. The Museum of Pop Culture is right in front of me right here. This neighborhood more specifically is known as the Lower Queen Anne neighborhood part of Uptown and we'll, we, we will be walking towards downtown. We're going to be visiting the Pike Place Market, home of the first Starbucks. And also the Seattle Great Wheel, which is a Ferris wheel right on the water. This pop culture museum is very unique in its architecture. Kind of looks like brushed steel with a lot of nice curves. This city is known to be a tech hub with companies such as Amazon and Microsoft having headquarters here. Technically, Microsoft's headquarters is in Redmond, Washington, which is not too far away from here. The nickname of Seattle is known as the Emerald City, also the Rain City because it just happens to rain here quite frequently. Today we're blessed with a nice sunny day. Let's take a look at this information board. And we got a great view of the uh, Space Needle from here. There is an elevator that um, brings you up to the top and I believe there's a rotating restaurant at the top of the Space Needle too. Let's see, where are we? Okay, Museum of Pop Culture. And we're walking in here. As you can see, there's a lot to do here in this Seattle Center area. There's also a monorail that connects the Seattle Center to downtown at the Westlake Complex. The fare currently is $3.50 to ride. We won't be taking the monorail. It's definitely one of the more unique playgrounds I've ever seen. There's that monorail. I believe that monorail was built during the World's Fair and has stayed ever since.
the mole pop from a different angle. The Seattle area is really known for its scenery. Just walking around, you'll see great big trees, nicely landscaped areas. Expressly Northwest, the best of the Northwest. There's a uh, souvenir shop. Next available appointment is 1.15 p.m. Hey, we're past that. It's 1.21 right now. Let's see how much it costs for a ticket. Looks like they have several options available. Oh wow, depending on the time you come, it's more expensive or less. And they also have a combination ticket and city pass as well. And here's the entrance to that monorail to downtown, 350. Don't really know how long it takes. This is called the Alweg monorail, built in Germany by the Alweg Rapid Transit System. Very nice transportation. As I said, 350 for a one-way ticket. All aboard, it's about to leave soon. And And these are the ticket kiosks where you buy a ticket. As you can see, this is quite the tourist attraction. You even have a little mascot in the corner there.
All right, let's take a walk to downtown. We'll be skipping the monorail on this trip. Maybe I'll ride the monorail on the way back or something, but. The Chihuly Garden and Glass is very close by. Right next to the Seattle Space Needle. I don't know why they uh, built all this tree all these trees here to block the building, but Iconic fountain of the Space Needle right here. Get a better view from the street level or the street area. This is probably the best view to see the Space Needle from. I think that person was shocked I was in I was there. From here we'll take a walk on Broad Street down to First Avenue walking towards downtown. Now, I would like to avoid 3rd Avenue. The next area I'm going to be walking through is called Belltown. I've heard that Belltown can be a little bit sketchy.
There's uh, several people there who are mentally ill. And I'd rather not interact with those people on 3rd Avenue if I can avoid it. I'm not really too sure how it's going to be on 1st Avenue, but hopefully a lot better. We are walking towards the water now, the Elliott Bay. We might even get a glimpse of it before I turn off to the left. Looks like Seattle has several micro uh, mobility vehicles for rent, scooters and bikes included. Here's 3rd Avenue. The street that I'd like to avoid all the way going down to downtown. Pacific Science Center. From my first impressions of Seattle so far, I find that it's a very clean and organized city. I was reading that there's multiple street grids throughout the city itself. Second Avenue.
I like their bike infrastructure, separated from car traffic. Sidewalk is closed. I think it's okay. We can walk on 2nd Avenue maybe for a block and then turn to the right. Street is closed ahead. And there's the water. I really would have loved to have walked on Broad Street though, the street before this, because there's a park there called Olympic Sculpture Park. It's an offshoot of the Seattle Art Museum, but it has artifacts from the Olympics. This area between the Seattle Center and downtown isn't really the most exciting for tourists. So I won't fault people for taking the monorail to uh, skip this part. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you could always skip ahead. Seattle parking enforcement on the job. Make sure you pay the meter or they will get you. Here's a Mexican restaurant, Taquera Cantina.
This is going to make it a little bit difficult to cross the street with this truck parked in the crosswalk. Wonder what the crocodile is. Here's First Avenue and Wall Street. Belltown Market. Belltown Pizza. This looks like a nice little local bakery. The Macrina. Limoncello restaurant. They're closed right now, they'll probably open up later. How's it going? very interesting to see Seattle's architecture. There's a nice mix of um, brick buildings with some modern buildings.
Lumi Saki House, Zagat Rated. Ohana Japanese and Hawaiian Sushi Grill. And on the corner here, there's Queen City Bar. And across the street from that, you have this large building. Coastal Mexican, Taco Del Mar. Looks pretty good. How are you? <laughs> Federal Army and Navy surplus. One of the things that I've heard about Seattle is that the people are super nice. And that's generally what I find when I'm traveling anyway. One thing that's surprising me about Seattle is how hilly it is. You don't notice it, but there's some slopes within the streets here. And First Avenue here is the last street before a long descent down to the waterfront. We're actually getting very close to the iconic Pike Place Market now. Seattle also has a very nice uh, street art scene.
Bobby Medlin. I'm going to turn off here on Virginia Street now to Pike Place, the namesake of the Pike Place Market. It's famous for its fish market and seafood. Some electric powered bus, overhead catenary lines. Virginia Inn restaurant and bar. Look how steep this hill is. We're entering into the old part of Seattle now with the cobblestone streets. Don't trip or you'll fall all the way down this hill. Just to give you a reference, my camera is perfectly horizon level now and you can see the slope. Here's Pike Place. Historical District, Pike Place Market. I actually want to go down the waterfront now. Now it looks more appealing to me because we could see most of the alley from there. Let's be careful of this turning car. Alright, I think we're in Tourist Central now. Let's walk across the street. Taxi dogs, I wonder what those are. Oh, there it is. The original Starbucks coffee shop opened in 1971, March 30th. Founded by business partners Jerry Baldwin, Zev Siegel, and Gordon Bowker. 
They first met as students at the University of San Francisco. And uh, since this is a tourist attraction, it draws quite a bit of a crowd, even longer on the weekends. I've heard it could take like an hour or two just to get served at this original Starbucks coffee shop. It even has the old logo. Just gonna take a peek in with my camera really quickly. I'm smelling uh, pretzels right now. <laughs> I wonder why I'm smelling pretzels. They're making it right here. Horoshki Bakery. And here's the iconic public market sign that is very iconic of Seattle. This public market, you can walk right through it. Wow, that's so cute. There's an upper market here and a lower market. This is one of the most famous farmers markets in all the United States. City Fish Co. take fresh seafood home with you. And I could smell the seafood just from here. I don't even see it yet. It's not just farm goods you can get here, but artwork, jewelry, flowers if you want, cash only. Look at this old sign, farm fresh produce. But they're selling goat milk, uh, goat milk soap and natural toothpaste, drinking straws. Just a really cool place overall.
And over here you have a great view of the waterfront. We might be able to see the Seattle Great Wheel from here. It's to the south of us. There it is, the Seattle Great Wheel. And a view of downtown Seattle in general. I don't see the Space Needle though, where we started from. This cat is not shy of people at all. Let's check out the lower level of Pike Place Market now. Vietnamese magician magic show. I want to see where this fresh seafood is. I guess downstairs.
shops and restaurants downstairs. Pike Place Chinese cuisine. I think I'll wrap by the uh, lower level after I'm done with the upper. Probably are. People are paying. <laughs> Local honey sticks, 50 cents each. Fresh pasta. Pappardelles. Hi. Lowell's three levels of waterfront view. This place is pretty well known. This is definitely one of those places that makes Seattle unique. Here's the seafood. Established in 1911, they'll ship smoked salmon and fresh seafood worldwide. Pike's Barbecue. Restrooms downstairs as well as the lower market. This is super cool. Much less busier than the upper market, but here's more of the uh, shops. A lot of mom and pop places here. Small business. Even more shops down here.
books here, some art galleries. Home of the all day cookie, Cinnamon Works. Wow, look at these cookies. $5.75. Snickerdoodle, ginger snap molasses. Flavors from afar, Jamaican lamb rolls, meat pies, carrot cake. Me some pastry. A lot of these I've seen before in other Chinatowns throughout the United States and North America. A little bit more pricey than what I'd uh, expect to see. But we are in the tourist area. Mr. D's Greek. This is the sanitary public market. What do you guys like? Apple samples. I'll take it. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'll take one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, wow, this is so sweet. This is amazing. I can tell this locally grown. And come here. Choice produce and peppers at the sanitary public market. Fresh wild troll king salmon.
Oriental Food Mart. Wild Fish Poke. That's the iconic view that everybody knows about. It's even photographers here. Now if you don't want to wait in line for the original Starbucks, there's a conventional one over there. Sidewalk is closed, oh no. I was hoping to go over here to show you a little bit of these tall buildings, but I guess we're walking down this way now towards the Seattle Art Museum. Here's the Seattle Art Museum. I had left one fucking job. This is Union Street. There's a viewing deck here. I want to make my way over to Post Alley to see the gum wall of Seattle. 
That's also another tourist attraction. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get there from the route that uh, Google is showing me. But it is worth a try. Oops, sorry. No problem. Four Seasons Hotel. There's the um, Ferris wheel at the end. Wow, what a staircase. Uh, oh, I can go. I gotta go down that way. They need this staircase, otherwise it will be way too steep. I guess we can end this video at the gum wall. This hill is actually pretty steep. Post Alley Park. And here's the gum wall. Pretty unique tourist attraction, but I don't know, I think it's pretty disgusting. To be honest, I've <laughs> seen used pieces of gum on the wall here. People even uh, wrote out letters with used gum.
All right, everyone. I'm going to be ending my video of Seattle, Washington here. The largest city in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.